key real estate vocabulary words you have to know to pass your real estate exam, and let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where my mission is simple, to help you pass your real estate exam the first time. Vocabulary words, that's the key to passing the first time. So let's get- In today's real estate exam prep video, we're gonna discuss basically lease agreements, the types of lease agreements that you have to know for your real estate exam. And we're starting with number 143 of 300 in our vocabulary series, net lease agreement. Now a net lease agreement is where the lessee, remember the lessee is the tenant, they're gonna pay some or all of the property's expenses that they're leasing out. This includes property taxes, property insurance, and maintenance of that property, in addition to any monthly or periodic rents that they're gonna be required to pay. Now, there are three types of net lease agreements that you have to be familiar with. Number one is a single net lease agreement. This requires the tenant to pay property taxes in addition to that monthly or periodic rent. A double net lease is where the tenant is required to pay uh, the property taxes, the insurance premiums for that property in addition to any monthly or periodic rent. And then a triple net lease is again where the tenant's going to pay uh, the Pre, uh, the, the insurance premiums, the property taxes, and pay for property maintenance in addition to those uh, that monthly rent or periodic rent. Number 144 is a gross lease. This is where the tenant or the lessee pays a gross amount of rent to the lessor, which is the landlord. Now, the lessor is responsible for paying the property taxes, the property maintenance, uh, the, the property insurance. Now, utilities can be negotiated either way. But it, now we typically see this in like residential apartment leases or a residential lease where the tenant's renting out a single family home. So that tenant pays the, the landlord a monthly rent and then that landlord is, you know, is responsible for property maintenance, paying their uh, the, the the property insurance and the property taxes, and then utilities can be negotiated who's going to pay for what within that lease agreement. So that is a gross lease. Number one forty five is a percentage lease. Now a percentage lease is where the lessee pays the lessor a base rent, let's say a monthly rent or a periodic rent. When I say periodic rent, it can be structured in a way where the uh, tenant is paying the landlord, um, let's say quarterly rent or annual rent. In either case, it doesn't matter. We just call it a base rent. So the tenant is going to pay the landlord a base rent plus a certain percentage of the gross revenue that that property or that business generates in that property. Now this, this type of lease, a percentage lease, can also incorporate certain elements of a net lease. So for example, the tenant may pay a monthly base rent plus a 5% uh, gross revenue uh, percentage, and then on top of it pay, let's say, the property taxes. So a, in a percentage lease, there are some flexibilities to incorporate certain elements of a net lease. It's, it may or may not be very common in that particular area which you practice real estate is, but it's something that you have to know for your real estate exam. Number 146 is a ground lease. Now a ground lease is sometimes referred to as a land lease. It allows the lessee to develop a piece of property or a piece of land during the period of a tenancy. All right, so after the lease expires, then the land and any improvements that the tenant built on it becomes or reverts to the property owner. So let's say that I, uh, and, and, and the thing with these ground leases is typically they're very long term, 10, 15, 20 years. So let's say that I'm the tenant, I lease out a piece of property for 15 years. I put a co I build a, a, a huge department store or whatever the case may be, or a coffee shop or whatever. Uh, I'm paying for it as the tenant. But at the point that tenancy ends, which means that lease agreement expires, 
then the land plus the building that I paid for becomes the property of the land owner. So that's why it's referred to sometimes as a land lease. Number 147 is called a sandwich lease. And uh, this is very common in situations where we have subleasing or subletting. So the lessor is the landlord. They own the property. The landlord then leases the property out to me. I am the tenant or the lessee. Now I'm going to pay the landlord, let's say $500 a month. But my lease agreement with the landlord does not prohibit me for, uh, from subleasing the property out. So I decide that I can make a couple hundred extra dollars um, by moving out and renting the property to somebody else. So what happens is I move out and I rent the property to you. You are the sub lessee. I am the lessee and the owner is the lessor. So how it works is I'm going to pay my landlord $500 a month in rent. And then you, the sub lessee, are going to pay me $600 a month. I pocket an extra $100 a month. Now, what happens when I don't pay the rent? Remember, I'm the lessee. If I don't pay the rent to the landlord, well, what happens is the landlord has to not only evict me, but also you. All right. Now, what happens if you don't pay me the rent? Well, the landlord is totally out of it. I still have to pay the landlord uh, my $500 a month, but I have to then evict you, the sub lessee. That is, it, it, it can be very complicated because again, then the sub lessee could rent it out to somebody else. So if you're the sub lessee, you could then rent it out to one of your friends and collect a premium on the rent. That is why typically almost every kind of residential lease does not have a provision that allows uh, the lessee or the tenant to sublet it out or sublease it out to somebody else. It is or can be a common provision in a commercial lease. And typically when we do see that though, there are certain restrictions uh, that are detailed and outlined in that property or in that, in that lease agreement. So that is a sandwich lease. Number 148, a sale lease back. This, now, why would anybody want to do this? Well, let's look in terms of maybe a large facility. May I have, maybe I own a building and I have a, a manufacturing process. I make widgets and my business is growing like crazy. And I forecast out into three to five years, my current building is not going to work for us anymore. So what happens is I sell the property, my building to you and then immediately rent it back for another three to five years. So that way, at the point that I've outgrown the building, uh, then I can move on um, and to a, builder, a, bi a bigger building. The other thing that it does is by me selling the property to you, it, automa it instantly infuses capital or cash into my business that I could use to maybe buy a build a, a bigger building or invest it into the business or whatever the case may be. So sale leasebacks are uh, not uncommon to be quite honest with you. Number 149 is an index lease or sometimes known as a variable lease agreement. And this is, it's, it's a lease provision that's oftentimes included into commercial or into lease agreements for commercial and industrial property. Because when someone leases a commercial space or an industrial piece of property, these lease terms can be for many, many years, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And it's so uh, not possible to forecast what the rents are gonna be or the rent market's gonna be like in five, 10, 15 years. So they provide a, an index provision or a variable lease provision in there that allows for the periodic increase of rents and a lot of times that is uh, based on a specific index, such as the consumer price index or one of the other indexes that are out there. If you get into the, re uh, the, the commercial real estate side of things or the industrial side of things, there are, there are indexes specifically created and maintained for this particular type of provision. And you'll become very familiar with it, but you really didn't, don't need to know that much detail for the real estate exam only 
what uh, an index or a variable lease agreement is. So let's continue studying. Check out this video right here. If you have not subscribed, click the little circle to my left. Comments, questions down below. See y'all in the next video.